Okay, so these are the release notes for Stammer version 1.9.0, and we got a lot of things out in this release, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so one of the key things we got out with this release was what we're calling the character count for all of your data sources. We are now keeping track and displaying it in the user interface because we were already keeping track of it, but now we're displaying it. The total character count across all of your data sources, as well as if you expand this section here, it will give you a summary of where those are coming from. And then of course, for certain areas of the UI, when things have been trained, you will see the character count appear there as well. For instance, I have trained this chat bot here on this URL, and I have a character count of 982 characters that have been scraped and trained for this chat bot. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this will allow us in the future to allow you guys to crawl massive websites and make that something that is affordable and scalable for all of us. Each chatbot will, of course, come with a generous amount of characters that it can be trained on that are included. But for anyone that has a use case where they want to train, you know, a massive site, we can support that. But we will need packages to be purchased for additional character counts because there is a real significant cost behind our both our training of that data, as well as the storage and retrieval of that data. As always, if you have any questions about this feature or functionality, feel free to reach out to us. Okay, and the next thing we have gotten out with this release is a very simple table to view the leads that your chatbot has collected. So this is incredibly simple right now. As always, keep the feedback coming and we can make um, improvements, of course, to this functionality. We also have now the ability to export those leads to CSV. And of course, this feature and this functionality is setting us up for the future, which is the ability to, whenever a lead is collected, uh, hit up a URL and send the data for that lead to another system. And that should be coming out soon. We're actually working on that code now. It actually works in our development environment. So stay tuned for that. But yes, we do now have a table where you can actually view the leads that have been collected and a lot more lead collecting related features will definitely be coming out very soon. We're very focused on that. Okay, and the next thing we have added is actually the ability to clone a chatbot. So let me show you exactly how that works. You can go to edit chatbot and then view details and then scroll down to this box here. And this will give you the option to clone a chatbot. And that is both within your own account as well as any sub accounts you may have. I don't have any right now for this account that I'm using. But if there were some, an option would open up to where you could select a sub account and then clone that chat bot into that account. Now, keep in mind that sub account needs to have enough chat bots allocated or available to it that it can create a new chat bot, right? Because this is cloning and not moving. So let us know if you have any questions about that. Another small thing that we released in this um, is the add Q&A button has actually been moved to the top of the screen. One of our customers, one of you guys reached out to us and let us know in actually a um, one of our weekly office hours, which I highly recommend you attend. We love all the feedback. But one of you mentioned in the office hours something we had not considered, which is that as you added you know, more Q&As to this, of course, it you have to scroll up every single time, right? Um, another thing we will be doing with this that we're working on right now is adding pagination so that it's, you know, we don't have to display and load hundreds of these um, whenever you kind of view this user interface. And a lot more improvements to this Q&A are going to be coming over time. So as always, keep the feedback coming. Let us know if you'd like to connect. You know, we're working on the ability to import a CSV or an Excel file and train Q&As on that, as well as we are considering other functionality 
like possibly connecting it to a Google Sheet that it keeps updated, or maybe even a website of some kind. So just keep that feedback coming. Let us know if any of that is of interest to you. Okay, now, and finally, or one of the final things that we've made improved here is we've added the ability to change the background of the chat widget. So if you come here to the widget background, you can select a color and choose which color you want, or you can even select an image and upload an image that will be displayed as the background of that chat widget. And of course, making improvements to the customizability and the um, styling of the chat widget are very, very important to us and something we've been focused on lately. So keep that feedback coming. Let us know if there's anything additional you want to be able to configure. Another minor change we just rolled out with this release is you can now adjust this available text. So this text that displays right here. Okay, and the way you update this from change, changing it from saying available to something else is just by adjusting the subheader here, subheading. I'm going to change it back to the way it was. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last release notes, but we also have the chat input placeholder now. So as you can see here, this says, ask me anything, right? To prompt the user to ask a question. And now you can change this text as well. For instance, if you have another language um, that your chatbot is operating in and you wanna change it to be that language, then you can certainly do that. Okay, and so relatedly, you can also now change the chat widget's border color. So here you can set a radius for the chat widget border as well as change the color of it. We also have added the ability to customize the color of clickable links, and that should be selectable here within this um, hyperlink color setting. So when you change this, any hyperlinks that occur within the chatbot, you can set the color of them. And then finally, we also made some minor changes using the, the term color, the, uh, the American English version of it versus some British English versions that you were seeing in the user interface, as well as some other minor uh, typos and other kind of spacing and formatting issues that some of our customers identified. So please keep that feedback coming. If you see anything in the tool, even if it's, even if it's as small as you know a typo or something, please send that our way and we will certainly get that corrected. But that is it for the Stammer version 1.9.0 release notes. Like I alluded to earlier in the video, please stay tuned for the lead collection outgoing webhooks. Whenever an email is collected in the chat widget, you will be able to, you will have the ability to define a URL that we will send that email, that data to as JSON. And then shortly thereafter, another kind of related feature we're working on is the ability for you to define any field, anything that you want the chatbot to collect inside the actual chat. And the chatbot will then do its, it will, it will collect, it will keep going basically until it collects that data. For instance, if you tell it, I want the user's email, I want the user's age and I want the user's hair color. It will go through and collect all that data. And then we will send it to a URL you define. So that's coming very soon. Anyway, as always, please keep that feedback coming like I kept saying on this video. And if you guys have any questions, any issues, anything at all that you wanna to talk to us about, either join the office hours or open a ticket from within our user interface and we will get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much.